Good day, everyone. You are welcome to your literature in English lesson. I remain your facilitator, Mr. Oladili. Today, May 22nd, 2020, we shall be considering the topic Analysis of Umar S. Farouk's The Song of the Women of My Land. This is an African poem. The Song of the Women of My Land. Now, our Bible reference is taken from the book of Psalm, chapter 137, verse 4. How shall we sing the Lord's song in a strange land? How shall we sing the Lord's song in a strange land? This rhetorical question captures the captivity experience of the Israelites by the river of Babylon. The land of slavery did not encourage or allow them to sing the Lord's song. Today, our objectives are we should be able to discuss the poets and the poem's backgrounds. We will be able to state the of Farouk's The Song of the Women of My Land. We should be able to expatiate the subject matter, science analysis of the song of the women of my land. We should be able to carefully enumerate the themes of the poem. We should be able to give the language and style of the song of the women of my land. And finally, we should be able to identify the structure of the song of the women of my land. Let's proceed. Uh, let's read the poem for a deeper understanding. The poem goes thus. Like a sculptor chipping away at bits of wood, time chisels away bits of their memory. It strips away lyrics of the song of the women of my land, leaving only a fading tune echoing the song. They sang in the forlorn fields about their lives, songs of how they plowed the terrain of their landscape for memories of lyrics lost in the vast void of time. In those days when a song beheld their lives, when servitude curved the ankles of their soul, and the reliction decapitated the epic of their lives. With a song, they sponge off their anguish to behold their collective pain, to celebrate their gains, give lyrics to the tune of their lives, cheat the tyranny of time, and commune with the yet unborn to give meaning to an epoch lost in antiquity. Yet time strips the lyrics and scars the tune, learning, leaning a dying song dead. Like the woman who died long ago, leaving the song to tell them of their lives. Today, the tune roams in forlorn fields, like their souls looking for lyrics to tell the tale of the servitude of the women of my land who plowed their soul and soil. For a song to sing the story of their lives, the song of the women of my land, left in the memory of the wind. Now feeding the verses of poets, it echoes in ringling in rhythms and melodies, hollering in distant tunes, in places for a field, the forlorn fields, where the song of their lives died. The stuttering lips of my pen and the screeching voice of my rib Try to sing the song of the women of my land in verses far from the theater of toil, where they left a song that now roams the land, stripped of lyrics like a scorned ghost. The tune turning the tenor of my verse is all that remains of the song of the women of my land, who labored and died leaving a dying song, the dead of their lives. It's an interesting story by Umar Farouk Sese about the poet. Who is Farouk? Umar Farouk S is a notable Sierra Leone poet. 
is a graduate of Farah Bay College, University of Sierra Leone. His works have been published in many anthologies such as Lies in the Lion's Mane, The Age of a Cry and Broken Metaphor, are a few of his poetry collection. He's a playwright and novelist. Farouk has Kabri Visiting Fellow in 2009 at the Center for West African Studies in the University of Birmingham, the United Kingdom. Many of his poems have been translated into German and Spanish. So he's a popular poet, a novelist, writer of short stories. Okay, well, let's delve into the background to the poem. Let's look into why Farouk wrote the poem. From the time immemorial, women have been treated as inferior to men across the globe. In some cultures, they are even subjugated to the background. The gender is susceptible to oppression, exploitation, and inhuman and undignified treatments. In fact, African women have doubled yokes of oppressors, the first of which is their men, who see them as uh, a property. And the general colonial experience of the continent of Africa, so the women of Africa are exposed to these two yokes of oppressors or oppression. African women are seen enduring their condition. How do they do this? When they are working, hard laboring in their own capacity, they sing away their sorrow, anticipating a new dawn of joy. In fact, African women are strong in that respect. They toil daily in the sun and in the open fields to contribute to the substance of their families and sustenance of their families and that of the countries. Unfortunately, these women are left unsung as only a few members of their community have memories of them after their demise. Their remembrance is usually done in a dirge performance or composition. I think this is what informs Omar S. Farouk to write his poem in dirge. And that is what he emulates in this poem. So from this, we can uh, get and discover that we're going to maybe be talking about the plight of the African women. Okay, The setting of the poem. The countryside in northern Syria alone is the physical setting of this poem. Probably it is Masingbi in the Tukum. To, to Konlili district, where the poet comes from, that the whole uh, inspiration uh, comes from. Socially, the setting of the poem is a rural region where the women's primary occupation is farming. From the pictures on the right hand side, uh, you will see uh, the clear picture of what a rural area is. The time setting, which was in the distant past, suggested this, though little has changed in the plight of the women in this present age. Women are still seen as uh, is a, 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 a folk that should be subjugated. And psychologically, the poem recounts the time when nothing at all was being appreciated of the heroic deeds of the women in society. What is the subject matter of this poem? The poem is a meditation on the plight of African women, especially that of the peasant women in agrarian communities, as in rural areas where farming is the major occupation. The person remembers how these women folk were subjected to oppression and hard labor 
on plantations. The poet personal then speaks of how the women coped with the condition by immersing and entertaining themselves with singing. The personal laments on how the songs of which their lyrics tell of their stories are hardly remembered today. The song is dying. Nobody remembers as nobody remembers the heroic deed of a woman in any African society. It's quite unfortunate. The tune of the song which are a shadow of the substance, are the only thing available to the persona to write about. So the writer couldn't lay his hand on much thing to write about the plight of women because not much is remembered or is written down about the heroic deeds of the African women. The tunes of the song which are a shadow of the substance are the only thing available to the person to write about. And how pleasant would it have been if the person, the poet person, can lay his hand on the lyrics as well as the tunes. But it's quite unfortunate that it's only the, li- the tunes that were available to the poet. Look at the, those women. One is even having a baby on her back and she still has to till the ground. It is quite unfortunate. Okay, let's delve into the stanza or line by line analysis. Lines 1 to 11 in Song of the Women of My Land, the speaker begins by using a simile. The poet personal compares how time wears away the memory of the content of the song of the women of his land. Then he compares or he likened the way a sculptor chips off bits of wood in his effort to create his artifacts. Look at a sculptor on our right side of the screen. The man is making frantic efforts to carve out an image and it's chipping off uh, bit by bit woods. Now, he now compares that activity of a sculptor to that of time, which also wears away the effort of the women. Time here is seen chipping off the lyrics of the women's song, leaving the song with little or no substance. These lines show that the women actually sang of their lives, which are characterized by enslavement and hard labor in lonely and hopeless conditions. They sang about how they toiled tirelessly and took solace in their singing. They sang of how they risked being killed for neglecting their duties. They sang a song. Lines 12 to 18. We get to know the poet's uh, personal's emphasis. As the poet personal repeats how the women warded off their sorrow by singing to celebrate their gain. They sang to tell stories of their lives, to while away the oppression of their present condition, to reflect about their future, and to interpret so as to comprehend their past. Lines 19 to 23 makes us to understand that despite the women's resistance to oppression of time, it still succeeds in wearing away the contents of their songs. It's quite unfortunate. Time leaves only distorted tunes and a dying song. Without mincing words, the poet says further that the song is dead. He compares the death of the song to those of the women who died long ago and left the son to tell their stories. Here, in lines 24 to 36, the tunes of the song are found roaming the deserted and abandoned plantations, just the way the souls of the dead women searched for the lyrics to tell the stories of their oppressed and sorrowful lives. The song is left 
in the uncertain memory of the poets who, like his fellow poets, uses the lives of these women as inspiration of subjects of discussion of their poems. If you can remember, you uh, you you should be able to uh, make reference to the first African poem written by uh, this Senegalese, the black woman. So, a lot of African poets have drawn their inspiration from the plight of the women of Africa. The poet's versifications, that is his poems, are now crying out with wriggling rhythms and melodies from the abandoned plantation where the song of their lives died. In lines 37 to 46, the poet's personal informs us of how he strives to capture the lives of the women in his verse, that is in his poem. While attempting to write the poem, his lips screeches and the tip of his pen starts bubbles. By implication, the poet finds it difficult trying to capture the story of the women in his poem, since the events that constitute the women's stories happened at a place and time far away from the contemporary time. The contents, lyrics, have been chipped off of their song, and it is the tunes that left the poem of us. This summation implies that many parts of the women's story of oppression and hard labor are unheard, not accounted for in this poem and probably in his contemporaries' poems. Good. Because of uh, our time, I want you to stay tuned as we move to the second part of the analysis as oh, the analysis cannot contain just a, a presentation. So stay tuned as we move to the second analysis. So I want you to meet me there. Thank you very much. <laughs>